Senate Republicans have all but completed their cover-ups of the president's crimes as they block witnesses and move to acquit him. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> Donald Trump is not just a very dumb man. He's also a very weird man. He definitely believes things that are dumb, but he also believes things that are weird and dumb. First, there are your garden variety dumb things. Like yesterday, when he congratulated Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, on Twitter and said, you represented the great state of Kansas and, in fact, the entire USA very well, which would have been fine, except the Chiefs are based in Kansas City, Missouri. Now, I know it's confusing that there are two Kansas Cities to a middle schooler who's just finding out about it. But I guess we can't expect the president of the United States to keep track of all the states. I mean, he knows that the red ones are the ones that like him, and Florida's the one that looks like a penis. <laughs> and Trump really can keep being dumb because there's no cost from his base. Trump's supporter and head of the American Conservative Union, Matt Schlapp, tweeted, Dear East Coast establishment, Kansas City, Kansas is in Kansas, which is true, but that's not where the Chiefs play, so it's irrelevant. <laughs> That would be like me saying Matt Schlapp sounds like slang for the sound it makes when you fart in yoga class. <laughs> Irrelevant. Now, those are the standard sorts of dumb things we're accustomed to hearing from our president, but then there are the weirder dumb things. For example, here's a weird dumb thing Trump believes. He seems to think that stealth military jets, which use technology to avoid detection by radar and other means, are literally invisible to the naked eye. It's something he's said many times, including at a speech in Michigan last week. I know everybody here in Michigan supports our great armed forces as much as any place, Michigan. And that's why we're giving strong consideration to deploying some of our mighty F-35s to Selfridge Air National Guard Bay. And you know what that means, right? You know what that means. That's a big deal. So Selfridge, uh, you're going to see a lot of very fast planes. Actually, they're totally stealth. So maybe you won't see them come in, okay? You won't see them come in, but they're coming in. He genuinely thinks stealth means invisible. His brain is only capable of thinking in cartoons. He actually believes the military has developed the same technology as Wonder Woman. Our great soldiers are out there fighting ISIS with their bracelets and golden lassos. Honestly, there's a good chance we could prank Trump by leading him down a jetway and telling him, Mr. President, we'd like you to be the first man to board the invisible F-35 jet <laughs> and then just watch him fall face first onto the runway. <laughs> and... <laughs> and you know what sound it would make when he hits the tarmac? <laughs> Match slap! <laughs> then on Friday, Trump gave another speech where he did his usual shtick of bragging about stuff he hasn't actually done, like, for example, the jobs numbers. But he also decided to give his daughter, Ivanka, a shout-out as well. Now, as you watch this clip, just remember that about 6.7 million jobs have been created during Trump's presidency. And, hey, while that's great, it's also incidentally lower than the 8 million jobs created in roughly the same period of time at the end of Barack Obama's presidency. Just remember, that's how many jobs Trump and Obama created in roughly three years each, about 14.7 million combined. Now, here's the president on Friday talking about how many jobs his daughter has supposedly created. Ivanka's been a champion for administrative and legislative actions to combat human trafficking and a true heart. She has, uh, this issue has been so important to her. This and making sure people are ready to work. And she's now created over 15 million jobs for the people of our country. One of the reasons our unemployment numbers are the best ever. 15 million. She's created 15 million jobs? I don't even know what her job is. I mean, I think she works with at-risk teens. I don't... At this point, I don't think he's even consciously making up these numbers. I think they just randomly pop into his head like those ping-pong balls they use in the lottery. Tonight's Mega Millions numbers are one, five, million. This is the deranged mind of an adult man who is incapable of wielding the tremendous power he holds. Republicans are deeply committed to allowing him to keep that power by any means necessary. Take Senator Lamar Alexander, for example. He was considered a possible swing vote for allowing additional witnesses, but ended up voting against it. And on Sunday, Alexander was asked if, by quitting Trump, he would be emboldening the president to once again seek foreign interference to cheat in an election, something Trump has already done twice now. And Alexander insisted Trump wouldn't do it again. Are you at all concerned, though, when you seek foreign interference, 
he does not believe he's done anything wrong, that what has happened here might encourage him that he can continue to do this? I don't think so. I hope not. I mean, enduring an impeachment is something that nobody should like. Even the president said he didn't want that on his resume. I don't blame him. So if a call like that gets you an impeachment, I would think he would think twice before he did it again. Think twice? He doesn't even think once. He's like one of those single-celled organisms that only reacts to light and heat. But as the vote to acquit Trump approaches on Wednesday, this is the argument Republicans have arrived at. They literally just don't care, even if there are more witnesses who could attest to Trump's criminality. For example, on Friday, we got yet another bombshell leak from a manuscript written by Trump's former National Security Advisor, John Bolton. Trump told Bolton directly that he wanted to force Ukraine to dig up dirt on Democrats. Ambassador John Bolton claims President Trump's pressure campaign on Ukraine began much earlier than was previously reported. The New York Times reports, quote, President Trump directed John Bolton, then his national security advisor, to help with his pressure campaign to extract damaging information on Democrats from Ukrainian officials. The article goes on to say Mr. Trump gave the instruction, Mr. Bolton wrote, during an Oval Office conversation in early May that included the acting White House Chief of Staff, Mick Mulvaney, the President's personal lawyer, Rudolph Giuliani, and the White House Counsel, Pat Cipollone, who is now leading the President's impeachment defense. Think about that. Trump literally said the crime he was doing out loud in the Oval Office, and there were multiple witnesses. At least Nixon tried to keep his tape secret. If Trump had tapes, he'd be selling them in Times Square. <laughs> Guys, check out my mixtape. There's more where that came from. <laughs> Now, as a side note here, I just want to say, the way Bolton has handled this has been gross. He was already a bad guy, but now he's selectively leaking damning evidence of the president's criminality just to sell a book instead of coming forward and telling everyone what he knows. If you know someone who's planning to rob a bank, you call the cops immediately. You don't wait a year and then publish a book called Remember That Bank That Got Robbed? I knew about it. <laughs> but still, now we know, not only did Trump say what the crime was, there were multiple people present. Senate Republicans could have called any of these guys to testify, Bolton, Mulvaney, Giuliani, and yet they voted not to hear from any of them. Here's how Alexander explained his vote to block witnesses during an interview with NPR. I don't need to hear any more evidence uh, to decide that the president did what he's charged with doing. So if you've uh, got eight witnesses saying that you left the scene of an accident, uh, you don't need nine. He said that's not what happened. It's more like Trump caused the accident by driving his golf cart through the front door of a Wendy's, stayed at the scene of the accident, eating fries off of other people's plates, called a press conference, bragged that it was a perfect accident, then in tweeted in all caps, no collision. <laughs> Another Republicans quickly joined in on the cover-up. Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski admitted in a statement that I have come to the conclusion there will not be a fair trial in the Senate. And Florida Senator Marco Rubio said just because actions meet a standard of impeachment does not mean it is in the best interest of the country to remove a president from office. Think about that. They're literally just announcing it to the world. We're doing a cover-up. We won't hold a fair trial. And even if he's guilty, we won't remove him from office. They might as well come out and say, remember all that confetti from the Super Bowl? Those were documents from the White House we shredded. <laughs> See, this one says, let's do crimes. <laughs> But the most shameless response to the vote on Friday came from Senator Lindsey Graham, who celebrated the GOP cover-up with some colorful language on Fox News Friday night. You know what I believe about all this? It was a bunch of partisan bull in the House. It continued in the Senate. It's going to end Wednesday. The president's going to get acquitted. It's going to blow up in their face. Why, Lindsey Buckingham, Beauregard, Montgomery, Longstreet, Winchester Graham, you mind your tongue. Need I to remind you, you are on the airways of a decent all-American family channel called Fox News. <laughs> the network of such stand-up personalities as Roger Ailes, Bill O'Reilly, and America's scream heart, Janine Pirro. <laughs> GOP cover-up and the likely vote to acquit Trump on Wednesday should seal it once and for all. The Republican Party is totally and completely devoted to a corrupt imbecile who thinks planes are invisible and doesn't know there are two Kansas cities. All Republicans care about is clinging to power, their supposed respect for the founders, and the rule of law was a fraud and a scam. And every time they lecture the rest of us about the sanctity of the Constitution, it was all bull****. This has been A Closer Look.